Hey guys, uh, I know it has been a while and I know I don't need to apologize but I kind of feel like apologizing because I just keep taking these little unplanned breaks from YouTube uh, for a lot of reasons, just lots of things going on right now including a bunch of deadlines and things I'm trying to finish and in my head every day when I think about vlogging the idea of picking up the camera and filming doesn't really bother me at all but I know in my head that I'm gonna have to take a couple of hours to edit the video later and it's like that's a couple hours you could be spending on your book or on this project or on whatever and but excuses excuses I'm here <laughs> so today I decided to film because uh, in a couple minutes uh, Lisa's live stream is going to start and um, by the way I think we are going to experiment with streaming her live stream on my channel and on Robert's channel I might give that a shot today and see how it goes so you might see that live pop up I guess as I'm saying this it will have already happened by the time I upload this video but yeah I might be broadcasting that live stream every Wednesday if you would like to jump jump in and do some writing sprints with us but anyway my goal for today is to finish my middle grade mystery novel and send it to my beta reader I am very close I just I basically have to revise the last two chapters which doesn't sound like a lot but it kind of is <laughs> and um, because they were the the, the most rushed zero draft kind of sloppy version when I finished the draft in the first place but uh my one of my beta readers she is a full-time copy editor and developmental editor and she happens to have this little break in her schedule now and I feel like every day that I delay sending it to her I'm like disrespecting her time which is a great motivator to, for me to just get off my butt and finally finish this thing so that's my goal for today the other thing is I I'm planning a video for next week um, inspired by an email I received and it is a rather weighty topic. Um, one might even say a controversial topic and I have very strong opinions about it but I realized I don't really want to make this video only with my opinions. I would like to include as many of your opinions as possible so at the end of this video I'm going to share a little bit about that and ask for your input in the comments below so that I can include and hopefully just kind of like have a more well-rounded balanced discussion about this in next week's video. Hope that all made sense. So, but first, right now, let's get to some writing. in said that they were in the first third of their novel and that they were stuck um, to me if you're if you're stuck so early on that feels like a structural problem or a plotting problem generally speaking yeah. like it's really common to get stuck in the middle yep. because <laughs> and she's not quite there yet <laughs> I mean me first third maybe yeah. but um, yeah so uh, generally speaking that is a plotting issue <laughs> I, I was going to say, whether you're a planner or a pantser, um, this happens and it's exactly as Lisa said, there's things you just haven't figured out. And since it was most of my last year and I had a thin plot that I was expanding from a short story and running with it and pantsing a lot of it, the same thing happened and I just had to get back to squares, plot it out, solve my problems and do what I normally do and flush the story out because there's just something in there that you haven't figured out. And, yeah. You know, sometimes getting away from it and reading or watching movies and doing something else until ideas start popping again, you know, can be helpful. There's no easy answer here. I wish there was, but <laughs> getting back to squares is what you have to do and whatever gets you there and inspires you is the ticket. Yeah. yeah. Hey guys, so it is the next day because I got so into what I was working on on my book yesterday that I forgot to take b-roll and then I forgot to film all together as the day went on uh, I we had a great live stream it actually worked by the way live streaming on my channel and on Robert's channel so you might notice that pop up we are gonna be taking next Wednesday off because Lisa is gonna be out of town but after that Wednesday mornings Hope you can join us and you can see the live stream on my channel as well. Anyway, uh, it was great. I got I got over a big, the second to last chapter, which needed the most work. I got that done on the live stream. 
And then later in the afternoon, I revised the epilogue. I won't lie, I kind of petered out towards the end because I want to end this book in a way that sets up a potential sequel. I, I envision this as potentially being a static series, meaning there's no like, there wouldn't be like a set number of books, like a trilogy. It could ostensibly go on forever and you could read the books out of order and it wouldn't matter. They, it's just like different stories, but set in this world with these characters, right? And, you know, I can't remember how much I've shared about this premise. I don't think I've shared much at all, but it is a mystery. And I wanted the kids have solved a mystery successfully at the end of this book. And I wanted to set up the next mystery. But I also want to do it in a way that's like, if this does ultimately end up being a standalone, it doesn't feel like a cliffhanger at all. It's just like, oh, they're about to have another adventure, you know? And I just ran out of like mental creative, creative energy <laughs> to come up with what I would want that potential book two to be. So that blog kind of petered out, but everything else, I took the rest of the day to proofread it. And I didn't finish until, I think it was around nine o'clock last night. And I finally sent it to my beta reader, <laughs> which felt really good. Uh, if you're curious, I, it did end up coming in just under 35,000 words. So I think, remember from the very beginning, I was aiming for 25, but kind of knowing that it would probably be closer to 30. I am not surprised that it's more like 35. And to be honest, after reading everything through from the beginning in one go yesterday as I did, I kind of get the sense that the feedback I'm gonna get is going to require more expansion than cutting, uh, which is totally fine. Um, I could see it coming in more like around 40,000 words, which again is still for middle grade, like definitely not on the long side. And particularly considering that a good chunk of this uh, draft is script for like comic graphic novel illustration stuff and not actual prose. Anyway, I turned it, I sent it to my, my beta reader. I am very relieved and very excited and i just wanted to update you guys on that i this morning uh, i am it's a book packager work day so i'm going to be focused on that but really quick i did want to share with you guys a little bit about the video that i'm gonna make next week because like i said earlier i would really really love to get your thoughts on this so someone reached out to me via email and it was a very thoughtful email and they did give me permission to share this email and which I will share it in its entirety next week. And I told them this is something I really want to take some time. And uh, I, I told them I was going to respond to them privately, but asked if I could also make a video about it and they were cool with it. So um, here's the, like the short version of the question. Am I really the best person to tell this story keeps me up at night, especially when I see agents specifically say that they are looking for authors who are from marginalized identities. I'm from a marginalized identity, but not the most marginalized identity that is featured in my book. If I query this book to them, will I be implying that I am a trans woman when I am not? Do I need to include a caveat that I am a bisexual woman like my protagonist, but cisgender unlike my protagonist? It feels uncomfortable to talk about my own sexuality and gender in a query letter, but I don't know how else to approach this. So I guess what I'm asking is, if my answer is no, I'm not the best person to write this book, but nobody else is writing it, how do I proceed from there? This person did, there's more to it than that, and I will, like I said, share the full email next week. But <laughs> we've talked about this a little bit, I've touched on it in other videos, how in general the own voices movement while what while it was so necessary and i still believe it is necessary to the publishing industry they have in my opinion turned around and kind of weaponized it particularly against marginalized people and they don't realize they're doing it when i say they i'm talking about editors i'm talking about publishers i really don't think they're doing it on purpose but we have all talked about already the many, many instances of authors being forced or not forced, but being put in a corner where if they want a book deal, they have to disclose things about their sexuality, their gender, 
their mental health, their, their race, uh, things about themselves that they might not want to talk about. And in some cases, it is not safe for them to talk about it, maybe because of where they live. Uh, in case you don't know, here in the United States, in some states, there are some pretty horrific laws being passed. <laughs> and it's not safe. It's not safe to be of a certain identity. And uh, if I get on a rant here, I won't have anything for the video next week. But I really, I have a lot of thoughts about this. I'm gonna, I, I'll let this person know that, you know, I had this deadline and I wanted to get that done first so that I could like really give this my full attention and give them a thoughtful response and I will be responding to them privately. But again, I want to open this up. I want to hear what you guys think about this. I would like to hear your experiences if you feel the same way as the person that emailed me. And also, sometimes when I make traditional publishing videos, some of you come out of the woodwork to comment and you are in the industry. Whether you're an author, an editor, you're in marketing, you're in publicity. Um, and if you have advice for this person, I would very much appreciate that because I am struggling right now <laughs> because my gut is to be like, no, you don't owe anybody this information about yourself. It is private. And yet I can't say that won't reduce your chances of getting an agent or a book deal because the way things are right now, it might. And I hate that. <laughs> I hate it. So yeah, I would love your thoughts below. Longer video to come next week. We will get into it. It's going to be a good time. I hope you guys are doing well, and I will see you next week with this video. <laughs> Bye.